Now let's take a look at the bubble sort algorithm. The bubble sort algorithm needs to be applied to unordered or unsorted lists. So you can see in front of us, we have a list called numbers and we have an unordered list. Okay, numbers aren't ascending or descending. They are just randomly placed all over the list. Now the bubble sort will make sure that we can sort this list. So it does start at one and end at nine. But how does it do it? So it takes the first two items in the list and does a comparison and says, is four greater than two? Yes. Then we need to swap these values. Okay. Then it continues and says these two values now, four and five, which is greater five. So it stays like this. It then does it again for three and five, and we'll have to swap it. And five and eight is okay. Eight and seven need to be swapped. And then eight and six will need to be swapped. And it will go eight here. Eight and nine is fine. And then one and nine. Okay. So that will be one pass through or one iteration of the bubble sort trying to sort this unordered list out. Okay. On the second pass through, we will have two and four. And then we'll say, okay, that's fine. It can remain the same. But four and three will need to be swapped. Four and five don't need to, five and seven don't need to, seven and six do. So you can see how it will sort this list. Um, the bubble sort method is referred to as bubble sort because the higher value keeps bubbling up. So in our case to the right, but you know what we mean, it's bubbling up the list till it gets to the end. So you can see already how it's starting to order this list. Now let's see how this looks in code. The first thing we're going to do is discover our length of our numbers list and be going to minus one. So we want the highest index. Okay, that's what we want with this value. So we take length and minus one. So we have nine items in this list, but index for this item is going to be eight and this will return eight. Okay, we're going to use this in a second. Next, we're going to create a flag, call it sorted and we're going to call or set it to false okay and you'll see we're going to do a while not sorted so while sorted is false keep doing these actions okay so then we're going to say sorted equal to true you'll see why in a second next we're going to do a for loop and say for i in range zero to length. Okay. So what does this mean? We know for I is our increment that counter that keeps going up. We're going to start it at zero and end it off at length. So it's going to loop through each index. Okay. Now we're going to do our comparison and say, if numbers, I, that's a one, if numbers, I, so we use our counter here. We say, if number I, is greater than numbers i plus one. So why are we doing this? Because remember from earlier, I said that the way bubble sort works is it takes the first two values and compares them and says, is two greater than three? So that's what we're doing here. If it is, we're going to say sorted equals to false because they are not sorted. Okay, then we're going to sort them and we're going to do this. We're going to say numbers i, okay, to so be referencing that first thing. Then we're going to do numbers i plus one and we're going to equal to the reverse. Okay, so we want i plus one and i. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are saying that this index, so two, please set that to three. Okay, so this index. Okay. Then we're saying for this index, set it to this one. So that's how we are, we are doing a comparison. We're checking to see if it's greater. And then if it is, we are swapping it. Okay, just like the theory says. Then. Believe it or not, 
that should be it. So if we print numbers and we run this, we now have an audit list. Okay. So why did this happen? Let's go a little bit more in detail here. So we looping, uh, we looping these actions. Okay. So if you remember, we said that we want to do this comparison. We're going to keep doing this comparison over and over again until we complete one pass through. And our one pass through is here. Okay. So inside that, we're going to loop as many times as required. And we're going to do the comparison and we're going to move, we're going to move those numbers up. Okay. But as you saw in the beginning of the video, once we moved two, then three, then four, we needed to come back and start again. Okay. So when we started again, that's why our while loop is here to start the whole iteration again. And now let's change this up here. So if we did three and two and five and four, so we just change it up a bit and if we run it again, you can still see it orders it. In fact, we got a double five here. So this maybe should be, I actually can't see six, maybe it's missing. Okay. And then we do this and there we go. Okay. So that is the bubble sort algorithm.